So, um, often in schools they'll have, um, in primary schools anyway, they'll have silkworms. Did anyone have that experience? They collect mulberry leaves and have silkworms. <laughs> so, um, they weave. It's amazing seeing them, the photography up close, right? but they, they make a cocoon and they stay inside that cocoon. And from, I don't know what kind of percentage, percentage it is, but most of them probably eat their way out of that cocoon. They, they break their way out and transform, reincarnate into a butterfly right, or a moth, whatever it's called, a silkworm moth, moth, I think it's called a moth. <laughs> um, but some, some can't get out and so the one I, I saw is one they actually very delicately cut the silk to make it so the, um, the moth could come out. But anyway, the um, great spiritual teachers describe that we're trapped in like a cocoon also, but we don't have the ability to get out. We can't just, you know, use our, it looked like teeth, but I'm not sure, <laughs> I mean, not our kind of teeth, but you know, they eat their way through because it's a really incredibly tight and really, really strong cocoon. It's so strong. They were having trouble cutting through it with scissors, right? I mean, they were also being super careful too. But, but um, you know, generally they get out by their own strength. But we can't get out of the condition that we're in by our own strength. So most of us don't realize at all that we're trapped, really, in the material world, that we are an eternal spiritual being we don't belong in this material world. We belong in the eternal, blissful, spiritual world. That's where the soul belongs. But because we have a minute degree of independence, then we choose our own good or bad fortune by our activities. And when we don't know the distinction between the body and the soul, then all, our, our, all of our activities are going to be in connection with this body and with the mind, right? because that's who we think we are. So we're going to, everything we do is going to be based on that assumption that I'm this body and I need to try and satisfy this body in some way. I need to have, get as much enjoyment as I can, you know, have relationships that are fantastic if I can, you know, but it's, it's based on this world. And the great spiritual teachers come to say, we're actually going through a cycle of one birth after another, trying to find our happiness, our fulfillment, our satisfaction. We're trying to find purpose and meaning in the wrong dimension. We're trying to find it here in the material dimension. And because we're actually a spiritual being, and we are created. There's no beginning and there's no end, but you know, we have a material mind and our, our concepts are limited. And so we talk about, you know, we have a beginning. We have a beginning in a sense in this material body, but we the soul don't have a beginning, but we came from God. The body is a gift from material nature. The body and the mind are a gift. And they're meant to be used in the service of God and for the welfare of all living beings. And they're meant to be used for self-realization, to help us become free from this trapped condition. Because there's so many of us in this material world, we just take it for granted this is our home, right? It's like we're all in this together. You know, we don't, we don't kind of see that we're all, you know, it's kind of like, you know, a person spends a really long time in jail, you know, it's kind of like that becomes their home, you know, it becomes their, that's, that's what they're familiar with. And 
I, I've heard in the past, there's a prison population of people who come out and they'll do something to go back in, sometimes on purpose, because they feel safer in there, it's familiar, they've got a roof over their head, they've got three meals a day, and so on. And you know, it's like that's an environment that they've become accustomed to. So we've been in the material world for endless lifetimes, and so we're really accustomed to this world, and we, we kind of accept the pain. You know, there's a, there's a saying, or oh, you can't experience pleasure without pain, or you can't know, you know, love without experiencing the opposite of it, or, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, you, gotta ha you have one, you've got to have the other. But, you know, tell that to someone who's going through a broken heart. Oh, well, yeah, you have one, you've got to have the other. It's like, no thanks. <laughs> Can I just have the one? <laughs> Can I just have the happiness? Can I just have the love? Can I just have the, the peacefulness? You know, I, I, I really, I don't need to suffer to know what enjoyment is. <laughs> you know, because the soul by nature is enjoying, right? That soul by nature enjoys, but their enjoyment is not connected with this material world. The enjoyment is on a spiritual platform. And that's what the great spiritual teachers come and encourage us and let us know you are trapped. You're trapped here. We're going through one birth after another. And within those experiences, you know, we come into this world. So Carmel's not here tonight, her daughter just gave birth. Right? It's a pretty heavy experience for both the baby and the mother. <laughs> not exactly nice. Right? It's really painful. And so, you know, that the pain starts well, even in the womb, you know, you're like completely squashed up, right? completely squashed. And, you know, people talk about, oh, going back into the womb or, you know, like in yoga, child pose, you know, all sort of, you know, tucked in, you know, it's like, that's my comfy position, but, you know, the baby's not in a comfy position, they're, they're squashed, right? And then they get squeezed out and then, you know, trouble starts, right? From there. <laughs> and, and that's just the beginning of each lifetime we're in, in this world, you know? And then, if, you, if you've got all your your new teeth? Have you got all your adult teeth yet? Okay. So when, when there's one problem that we forget about once you're an adult, you know what it's like to, to have a tooth come out and the other teeth are growing. You know, it's like the material world, there's so many different issues, but we just kind of, oh well, you know, it's just, that's just life, you know. But it's unnatural for the soul. It's totally unnatural for the soul to suffer. And the natural thing for the soul is to be blissful. And that bliss you can have even while you're here in this material world, if you know, truly know, you're a spiritual being. You're actually part and parcel of the Supreme Soul. And you can use your life in His service to help others in some way. And that service using our body and our mind for self-realization and we will still have you know the headaches and the you know trip over and whatever or fall off your bike and smash your teeth and stuff <laughs> all that kind of stuff you know you'll still have all that but with the knowledge of your spiritual identity none of that stuff really matters right it's all superficial it doesn't it doesn't touch you you know I'm here, I'm experiencing these different things, it's karma, and basically, suck it up. <laughs> you know, every time you experience some bad karma, it's like, okay, I've paid that debt, you know, where's all the rest? Because while we've got karmic debt, we need to take on another material body. So any time we experience pain in this world, it's like, okay, you, you can kind of it makes it easier if you can understand I'm paying off a karmic debt, that's one down, you know, however many more to go. So the material world has been created for us to try and be independent, try and be our own master and Lord, and for us to identify with this body and the mind, you know, we can, we can totally get into it. So sometimes people will talk about reincarnation, it's like, well, you know, if reincarnation exists, I'd remember my past life, and it's like, we don't remember our past life generally because 
it'd mess us up too much. <laughs> we'd be kind of like in two worlds, you know, or three or four or however many, you know. So nature's arrangement, you just immerse yourself in this particular body and the great spiritual teachers say, time, time to cut loose, right? Time to become free from this cocoon, this, this entrapment. And as we become more spiritually aware, more our relationship with God becomes stronger and deeper and real, then it's really easy to break out of this encasement. Right? But why we're without that knowledge and without that spiritual the spiritual knowledge, then we're firmly entrapped. The process of meditation is to help free us from that enslavement or that entrapment but simultaneously give us that spiritual ha happiness, that spiritual peace and love and nourishment that we all seek. Thank you.